this topic talks about one of the very important value that forms the basis for inferential statistics. That's called a critical value. Critical value is a factor that is used to compute the margin of error. Given in the following formula where margin of error is a product of the critical value and the standard error. It is also known as the reliability coefficient, which is determined by, the, by some probability distribution of an estimator. This estimator could be mean, this es estimator could be median, this estimator could be proportion or variance. As the probability distribution of the estimator changes, the way we look for this critical value changes. So these critical values are specific to the type of test and the significance level that is called alpha. Alpha is a very important value in the statistical inference as well, which defines the sensitivity of the test. A value of alpha is equal to 0 0.05 implies that the null hypothesis is rejected 5% of the time when it is in fact true. The choice of alpha is somewhat arbitrary, although in practice values of 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.10 are common. This is solely the choice of the researcher or the practitioner that is conducting in statistical inference. When the sampling distribution of the statistics is normal or nearly normal, the critical value can be expressed as a z-score or a t-score. When we calculate the critical value, the value alpha is important, where alpha is 1 minus confidence level divided by 100. The second is the, to find the critical probability, that is p star, which is 1 minus alpha by 2. And to express the critical value as a z-score, we first find the z-score having a cumulative probability equal to the critical probability. For standard normal distribution, let us assume our estimator follows a normal probability distribution. To compute 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval, we first need to compute the critical value for the from the standard normal distribution that is denoted by z alpha by 2. So if our estimator's distribution is not standard normal, but normal, then we can easily convert it into the standard normal by subtracting mean from the variable and dividing it by its standard deviation or standard error. So this is a table for the cumulative standard normal probabilities. If a random variable follows the normal probability distribution, we can convert it into the standard normal and then we look for the area. Like if our alpha is 0 0.05 and we are working with two-sided test, we look for the value that is alpha by 2, that's a half of it, and half of 5% is 2.5%. Is so we look for 0 0.025 right here. This zero value, 0 0.025 in the area that corresponds to the z-score, minus 1.96. Likewise, on the upper tail, it, it will be 0 0.975 and it also corresponds to 1.96. The most commonly used Z alpha by 2 values for certain confidence level are given here. Since the 5% level of significance is one of the most commonly used level of significance that translates into 95% confidence interval or confidence level, we see that that for alpha that reflects one-tailed and alpha by two reflects two-tailed. So in a confidence interval, when we are looking at the two tails or in testing of hypothesis, when we are looking at the two-tailed test, we look for alpha by two. When alpha by two is zero, alpha is 0 0.05, then alpha by two will be 0 0.025. And the area that we will look for is 0 0.975, this corresponds to z alpha by 2, that is 1.96. Hence, whenever we carry out the test of hypothesis or we are um, conducting interval estimation of an, an estimator that follows a normal probability distribution, for alpha 
that is 0 0.05, the, val the critical value will be 1.96 for two-tailed test or two-sided interval estimate. Estimators not always follows the standard normal distribution. Sometimes they do follow the T distribution. There is another well-known probability distribution. In here, the degrees of freedom plays a very vital role. So we look for the degrees of freedom and then our desired significance level. If our, for two-tailed test, our significance level is 5% and our degrees of freedom that we see on this dimension is 11, then the value that corresponds to 11 degree of freedom and 5% two-tailed significance level, it will be 2.201. Similarly, the critical values can be calculated using chi-square distribution. And if our, our estimator follows the chi-square distribution, we will again look for the degrees of freedom and significance level. At 5% level of significance, and five degrees of freedom, the critical value will be 11.070. Then it can be F distribution too. But for F distribution, we have two parameters. If our first parameter, our first degrees of freedom is five, and the second degrees of freedom is one, then our critical value will be 230.16. Whenever the sample size is large, or greater than 30, that's it. It, it does not make much difference if you use z-score or t-score to compute the critical value. Both approaches will, be, will yield similar results. Strictly speaking, when the population sta standard deviation is unknown and sample size is small, the t-score is preferred. So when the sample size is large, that is greater than 30, z-score and t-scores are equally preferable because they both will yield the same results. But for the smaller sample sizes, T-score is preferred. Thank you.